What is going on lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology playlist. In previous videos we have talked about spermatogenesis, oogenesis, implantation, blastulation, neurulation. Today we'll talk about the placenta. The connection between mommy and baby. Please watch these videos in order. After fertilization, day one you have the zygote and then day three you have the morula. About day four you get the blastocyst or the blastula. Next, between days six and seven you start the implantation. Then you have a bilaminar embryos, two layers, and then the trilaminar embryos with three layers. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. The bilaminar embryo, as you know, you have inner cell mass and the outer trophoblast. The inner cell mass will give you what? Epiblast and hypoblast. Who will become the actual embryo? Epiblast. Next, you have the trilaminar embryo, endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Pause and review. This is the blastocyst. You see that outer layer, the trophoblast? Yep, this will become the placenta. And we will have two trophoblasts, cytotrophoblasts and syncytiotrophoblast. The word cyto means cells. These are cells that secrete. How about since issue, they look like this and they can embed these projections into the wall of the endometrium. So the inner cell mass will become the embryo itself and then this is you. Your outer cell mass or the trophoblast became the chorion which gave you that placent. Gastrulation was discussed before. You see, this is the amnion and this is the chorion. Which one will become the placenta? The chorion. Where the flip did it come from? From the outer cell mass or the trophoblast. The trophoblast has two main layers. Cytotrophoblast, cyto means cell. Trophoblast means growth. Blast also means growth or maturation or generation. How about syncytial trophoblast or syncytial trophoblast? Syncytia means one unit. So even though you have multiple members here, they act as if they are one unit. From this beautiful mesoderm, you will get the umbilical cord, which will connect mommy, that's part of mommy, to the baby. Here is the amnion, here is the chorion. The baby is floating in the amniotic cavity, which has amniotic fluid basically made of the baby's urine. Yes, when you were young, you were floating in your own urine even if you belonged to the royal family. So have some humility, please. You're floating in your own urine, swallowing your own urine, and eating mucus, you arrogant, ungrateful piece of melon. As you remember, implantation happens at the more superior or posture superior aspect of the urine cavity. This is where the placenta will be, more superior than inferior. The placenta should be up here. Where did the placenta come from? From the chorion, which came from the trophoblast, which is the outer cell mass. What is the function of the placenta? It's like a two-way highway. It will help the nutrients and the oxygen pass from mommy to the baby because the baby cannot eat and the baby cannot breathe because the baby's lungs are not working up until the baby is born. When the baby is born, the baby can breathe on his own. Moreover, the placenta is gonna help the baby get rid of carbon dioxide and waste products. Again, because the baby cannot breathe. Do you remember the concept of concentration gradient? Let's do it again. Imagine that you have two compartments, compartment A and compartment B, and there is a thin, semi-permeable membrane in between. Compartment A has more crap than compartment B. Do you think the crap will pass from A to B or from B to A? According to concentration gradient, it will go from A to B. Same concept applies for air pressure. If the pressure is higher in California than Arizona, do you think wind is gonna blow from California to Arizona or from Arizona to California? Of course, from California to Arizona because California has a higher pressure relative to Arizona. So you go from high pressure to low pressure, from high concentration gradient to low concentration gradient. For this to happen, it means that mommy has more oxygen than the baby. So that oxygen will go from mommy to the baby, which makes perfect sense because mommy has lungs that function. Baby does not have functioning lungs. So mommy has more oxygen. The oxygen will go from mommy to the baby through the placenta. Nutrients are the same story. However, there is more carbon dioxide in baby because the baby cannot breathe it out. Carbon dioxide is gonna pile up in the baby. So carbon dioxide will go from here to here. Same thing with waste product. It's called the concentration gradient. Now this is my favorite slide. What's the difference between you right now and the embryo, you in the past? 
usually let's say about your arm okay your arm will have one artery and one vein or one artery and two veins so one artery accompanied by two veins it can happen we call this the vascular bundle however when you were an embryo especially in your umbilical cord you had two arteries and one vein oh isn't that weird mm, not so much let me explain in adults your artery carries oxygenated blood but when you were an embryo, the artery carried deoxygenated blood. Right now, your veins carry deoxygenated blood. But when you were an embryo, your veins carried oxygenated blood. We're talking about your umbilical veins here. What never changes is the direction. If you're an artery, it means you are a vessel that takes blood from the heart to an organ. Whether you are young or old, doesn't matter. An artery is something that takes blood from the heart to somewhere else. A vein is the opposite. A vein is going to collect blood from whatever organ to the heart. So why did we call the umbilical artery umbilical artery? Because it takes blood from the heart of the baby to the placenta. Why do we call this umbilical vein? Because it took blood from the placenta to the heart of the baby. But why are you taking blood from the placenta to the heart of the baby? Because this blood is oxygenated. I'm getting lovely oxygenated blood from mommy because the baby cannot breathe on its own. So here is the structure of the lovely placenta. This is the maternal surface or the maternal interface or the maternal side. This is the fetal side containing the umbilical cord. Maternal surface, fetal surface. Where are mommy's blood vessels? They are here and they are called uterine vessels because they are connected to the uterus. Mommy's uterus, that is. How about the baby's vessels? They are here in the umbilical cord. Here's a question for you. Does mommy's blood touch the baby's blood? The answer is no. And that's the purpose of the placenta is to separate both of them. So how come oxygen will go from mommy to the baby? By diffusion through a membrane but the two bloods do not touch. Otherwise, some antigens from the baby are gonna go to mommy's blood and mommy's gonna be immunogenic and start attacking the baby, immunologically speaking. So what's that umbilical cord? Is it endoderm, mesoderm, or ectoderm? It's mesoderm. What does it contain? Umbilical vessels. The red is the umbilical vein because it carries oxygenated blood carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the baby's heart. And these two blue lines are the two umbilical arteries. They carry deoxygenated blood from the baby's heart towards mommy. Now take a deep breath because we'll go to a different topic. The oxygen dissociation curve. Let's say that medicosis went to the gym. Look at my shredded physique. I started exercising the right arm, but not the left arm. The question is, which arm needs more oxygen right now? Of course, the right arm. Duh! So here is my red blood cells, and they carry oxygen. When they go to the right arm, they will give oxygen to the tissue. They will unload this oxygen from the hemoglobin and push it towards the tissue because my tissue needs oxygen. But when red blood cells go to my left arm, which is lazy, they will not give the oxygen to the tissue. They will keep the oxygen on the hemoglobin. Isn't that neat? Yes, this is neat. But how did the red blood cells know? They didn't. They reacted to some biochemical and physiological factors. So in the right arm, there is increased carbon dioxide. You know why? Metabolism. I'm burning oxygen, I'm producing carbon dioxide. There is increased acid in the right arm. You know why? Because I'm exercising and metabolism secretes acids, for example, lactic acid. This arm is exercising, raising the temperature. Metabolism, especially glycolysis, will increase my 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. All of these factors will shift the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. What the flip does that mean? It means that the red blood cell is gonna give the oxygen to the tissue. Oxygen is gonna leave the hemoglobin and go to the tissue in the right arm. On the left arm, the exact opposite will happen and the red blood cell is gonna keep the oxygen to herself. She's not gonna give any oxygen to the tissue. You know why? Because we gotta save all of the oxygen that we have to give it to the right arm because it needs more. Economics is the study of scarce resources which have alternative uses. There is no such thing as an unlimited amount of oxygen. 
That's why your body has to economize. That was deep. There are other factors that can shift the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the left. What does that mean? It means that the red blood cell will not give oxygen to the tissue and the red blood cell will keep oxygen to herself. The red blood cell will say, this oxygen is mine. And these factors include methemoglobin and hemoglobin F. We'll talk about hemoglobin F today. So, why do you call it hemoglobin F? Because this is the fetal hemoglobin. This is the hemoglobin of you when you were a baby. Oh, that's the baby's hemoglobin. Baby's hemoglobin will shift the curve to the left. What does that mean? The red blood cell of the baby will say, this oxygen is mine. These are the right shifters. These are the left shifters. If this black line was the normal, the blue line is shift to the right and the red line is shift to the left. Hey, Medicosis, this is not red, this is magenta. Shut up. When you shift to the right, when you go from the black line to the blue line, what's going to happen here? Oh, you see that? Go up and intersect with the black line and go up, intersect with the blue line. The blue line has a lower saturation. Saturation of what? Of the hemoglobin. What do you mean the hemoglobin has lower saturation? It means the oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and now the hemoglobin is being saturated less. In other words, when you shift the curve to the right, oxygen is leaving. Oxygen is being given to the tissue. In literature, the right hand symbolizes giving. So when you shift the curve to the right, you are giving oxygen to the tissue away from the hemoglobin. How about shift to the left? When you go from the black line to the red line, what happened to the SaO2? It increased, which means increased hemoglobin saturation, which means this oxygen is gonna stay on the hemoglobin, it's not gonna leave, and the tissue is gonna be left behind. No oxygen for you. So with left shift, the tissue is left behind. If you have ever seen a baby before, what's the baby's favorite word? And the answer is, mine this is mine it's mine such is the story of the fetal hemoglobin this oxygen is mine so here is mommy's side here is the baby's side and this is a single oxygen molecule in between should i go to mommy or should i go to the baby the baby has hemoglobin f mommy does not have hemoglobin f the baby's hemoglobin F is going to shift the curve to the left so that the oxygen is going to stay on the hemoglobin of the baby. And that's how the baby takes oxygen from mommy because the baby has no functioning lungs while mommy does. That oxygen is mine. This is the hemoglobin F. Why doesn't your woke professor teach like this? Functions of the placenta, supply oxygen and nutrients to the baby, eliminate carbon dioxide and waste product from the baby's body. Immunological protection by maternal antibodies, also known as immunoglobin, such as IgG, for example. Medicosis pearls for the pros. The fetal lungs are non-functioning. What does that mean? No gas exchange. Tell me why. Okay, think of this lung as thick, dense, dark place in the fetus. It's not working. The vessels are closed. When the vessels are closed, what is the radius of those vessels? Oh, he's just said it's closed. So the radius is non-existent, it's very low. And according to physics, when the radius goes down, what's gonna happen to the resistance? The resistance is always the opposite, it's gonna go up. So these pulmonary vessels have very high resistance, okay? According to Ohm's law, again, physics, when the resistance goes up, What's going to happen to the blood flow? Oh, the flow will go down. Same thing with electricity, if you remember. If you have two wires, one wire has a higher resistance. What does that mean? Oh, if it has a higher resistance, there will be less electrical flow. And since blood cannot go from the baby's heart to the baby's lung, there is no gas exchange. But once the baby is born, the baby is going to breathe in for the first time. The lungs will expand like crazy. And when you expand, what's going to happen to your radius? Increase. What's going to happen to your resistance? Decrease. What's going to happen to the blood flow to the lungs? It's going to increase. And suddenly, the lungs are converted from non-functioning piece of garbage into beautiful functioning alveoli and the baby will start to cry, which is a very good sign because it's part of the APGAR score. So, adults during exercise are the exact opposites of embryo. 
Embryos have very high resistance in the lung and therefore decrease blood flow. But when you're exercising, the resistance of your lungs are very low because you open all of your capillaries, increasing the radius, decreasing the resistance. And when the resistance is low, blood flow is high because you're exercising. You need more blood flow because you need more gas exchange. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Let's review teratogenics. They include smoking, alcohol, folate deficiency, phenytoin, and warfarin, thalidomide. And let's review phase two or the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. Remember, the first half was estrogen only. The second half was estrogen and progesterone. And then the progesterone is going to drop, the estrogen is going to drop, and then bleeding will happen. Let's go. It's the second phase. It extends from day 15, just after ovulation, to the end. So 15 to 28. After ovulation, the ova has left the follicle and now the follicle will become a corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone. Secreting progesterone provides a negative feedback, lowering FSH and LH. If pregnancy happens, the corpus luteum is gonna stay to secrete progesterone until the placenta takes over in the second trimester. But if pregnancy did not happen, if the ovum is not fertilized, this, Corpus luteum is gonna involute and becomes corpus albicans. Corpus body. Albi, white. White body. But corpus luteum, yellow body. No more estrogen, no more progesterone, and then the endometrial lining will fall, taking the ovum with it, and that's the menstrual bleeding. If you like this video, you will also love my autonomic pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Go to Picmonic for animated mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.